Anyone who knows me will know that I'm deeply passionate about the kingdom of God and particularly the kingdom of God that is described in the life and teachings of Jesus found in the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. And my particular favourite is that moment when Jesus returns from being tempted by the devil in the wilderness for 40 days, returning to his hometown, finds himself in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And there as he walks in, he's invited to read from the scriptures and he takes the scroll, which is the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling it, he begins to read from Isaiah 61, those incredible words. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. I just absolutely love it. I love to imagine the, the imagery as he stands to share and then sits in its fulfilment. Every eye fixed on Jesus. He shares this incredible passage from Isaiah 61, which goes on to say, that to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and a day of vengeance for our God, to proclaim uh, a comfort to all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on, uh, on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will renew the ruined cities that have been destroyed, devastated for generations. Such incredible words, such an almighty prophecy, a prophecy for the Messiah and a prophecy for those who work in the ministry of Christ. We take on that same anointing, the same spirit that anointed the Lord about this mission. It's the same spirit who anoints us. There is an anointing upon those who are the bringers of good news, an anointing upon those who proclaim freedom for captives. There's an anointing on those who uh, proclaim the favour of our God, an anointing on those who are sent, and an, an anointing on those who are the bringers of good news, an anointing on those who bind up, and an anointing on those who release. There is an anointing on those who comfort on behalf of God, an anointing that he bestows upon those who bestow beauty, an anointing on the bringers of joy, and an anointing on those who dress the brokenhearted with praise. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord was upon Christ and he is upon us. We are anointed about the mission of God. How often we forget that there's an anointing that comes with our job and we begin to work in our own strength instead of relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. God intends to use us. God therefore intends to help us. We join the mission of God and therefore are united and anointed with his spirit. And the outcome is incredible. They shall be called the oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They, they shall be called. I love the they in this passage. They are those that we go to reach in his name. They are those that we go in pursuit of. And it's they, they that display the splendor of God. I've always wanted it to be me, that it be me, Lord, that displays your splendor. But actually, it's a great promise on those that I go to minister to. They are the display of God's splendor. And they do so in two incredible ways. Firstly, they carry on themselves the marks of his transformation. They carry testimony to the changing power of God. They wear this crown of beauty instead of ashes. An oil of gladness is displayed on them instead of the grieving face of mourning. They carry over their lives this like garment of praise 
instead of a spirit of despair. How I long for that for my neighbours and my neighbourhood. May it be so. And secondly, they display the splendour of God as they become the rebuilders. Their mess becomes their ministry. Their, they are transformed to become transformational. They are restored to become restorers. They are rebuilt to rebuild the city. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and they will restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ancient cities. I've always thought that I was the rebuilder. I'm the one who wears the hard hat. I'm the one who grafts in my community. Yet more beautiful still is that those I go to reach are mandated, are given this mission that they are to rebuild their own communities, their forsaken cities. I go in Jesus' name, but he does this wonderful work of restoration. His grace gets involved in their life and what comes out is this incredible picture. The oaks of righteousness who begin to rebuild their own communities. This is beautiful replication. It's not dependent on me, but it's actually that God would use those I go to reach in his rebuilding mission. Often we think we have the answer, but it's those that we go to meet that become the answer in their own communities. And that's why we focus on young people. That's why Eden's job targets the young generation because they are the change makers to come. See, the problem becomes the solution when you enter a disadvantaged community and begin to ask what needs to happen here. Often you'll be told that young people are the problem. You've got to do something for the kids. But God in his grace and his mercy, as we focus on bringing a message of hope to a younger generation, says those young people will be the restoration plan. I'll use those guys to rebuild this neighborhood. I'll use those guys to bring about change. They are our prime focus because they are part of God's plan and purpose to restore the places that were once considered broken down. So we follow Christ. We follow Christ in his anointing. We follow Christ about his mission, knowing that those we follow him to will be called the Oaks of Righteousness, those called into the restoration ministry of God. And so we walk we walk after christ to young people and to the next generation we hope that you enjoyed the show make sure you don't miss out on what's coming up on message live all you need to do is like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to receive notifications and the latest news of Message Life.